Hi, how are you? I'm Anthony from Cypher House Escape, and I'm back with a, a bit of a different puzzle hunt kind of video. I've been recently working through this puzzle hunt that you see on the screen with a couple of my teammates. This is Edric's 2020 Puzzle Hunt. Edrix made a few treasure hunts in the past that I enjoyed playing, and this was his first attempt at diving into the world of puzzle hunt creation, so I was really excited to check out the kinds of things that he had come up with, and I've been enjoying the hunt a lot so far. There have been some really good puzzles in here. Um, to give you an idea of the kind of format that this hunt takes in comparison to some other uh, puzzle hunts, this hunt follows what's typically referred to as the Australian style of puzzle hunt, in that every day for about a week, uh, a new set of puzzles is released, and at the end of the week, the final day, the meta puzzle for the entire hunt gets released. Hints are also released gradually throughout the hunt, um, each day when a new puzzle set comes out, a new set of hints comes out for the puzzles that were released the day before. And now we're uh, close to the release of day four puzzles, and we still haven't solved all of day three's puzzles. As a quick note about how I usually communicate with my team during hunts like this, we have a Discord server, you can probably see the tab uh, open up there. In the Discord server, we'll usually talk about general ideas that we have about puzzles and things that we've tried. Um, but additionally to the Discord server, we also have a Google Sheets. Teams like to use Google Sheets like this because you can uh, work along with your teammates to kind of uh, make some progress on the puzzles um, simultaneously in real time. So there, Google Sheets is a really uh, useful tool for puzzle hunts uh, like this one. Um, you can see across the bottom um, all of the various puzzles. We have a different sheet kind of uh, created for each of the puzzles that we've tried. The ones that are green are ones that we've solved. If you've seen my series on the Princeton puzzle hunt, I organized my Excel spreadsheet in kind of a similar way. Uh, there are still, like I said, a few puzzles that we haven't solved. Um, among them is this one called Dense Wordplay. And I'll zoom in a little bit so that you can see some of the stuff that's going on with this puzzle. Basically, uh, we started out with a crossword style grid and a bunch of crossword clues. Several of the squares had more than one letter in them. Um, so this is the filled in grid and you can see that some squares, in fact, every intersecting square has only one letter in it, but several of the squares in between have multiple letters, uh, some of them even up to what six or seven letters uh, in some of these boxes. We then have these colored squares and organizing them in Roy G. Biv order gives index clues. And this is kind of where this puzzle uh, went from a normal crossword puzzle to something very interesting. Because if we go to clue one across and we take the first letter because it's clue one, uh, that gives us a P. If we go to clue five and we take the fifth letter, that gives us an R in the word short here. And we do that for all of the across and down clues and it spells prologue from into the woods. And so we've gone from a normal crossword puzzle to something else entirely. Uh, the only other piece of information given in this puzzle was this set of three digit numbers at the uh, top of the puzzle page that we've put in our sheet here. And we believe that this is some kind of book code, maybe, um, to extract letters or words from the prologue to Into the Woods. But uh, we still have this puzzle unsolved. That's currently where we are stuck, is knowing how to apply these three-digit numbers to Into the Woods. This is another puzzle that was released on day three that we are uh, currently haven't solved. One of my teammates last night actually made some pretty decent progress on that puzzle, uh, they realized that if you look at the letters above and below the colored letters, it spells out weave rubric. So let me pull that back up so we can see that here. Um, above and below the P is the W and the R. Above and below this uh, orange letter R is the E and the U. So it goes W, E, A, V, E above each of those five colors. And then rubric is below the colored letters there. 
So my teammate was able to determine that we were probably supposed to weave all these strips into a Rubik's Cube. Another one of my teammates was able to actually start doing that. It does look like it's time for uh, day four puzzles to be released, so I'm going to set this off to the side. I'm going to refresh the puzzle page now, and we're going to see what comes in. Um, oh, interesting. Okay, so I just noticed that the meta, meta puzzle came in today. Um, we thought that this hunt ran for about a week, uh, because that's usually the, the usual length of most of the Australian hunts. Um, but apparently the meta puzzle is right now, and uh, the first team to solve the meta puzzle wins. So we're going to give this a go. Okay, so in this meta puzzle, we have two lists of words, uh, and then we have this shape. They've crossed out comical. Yeah, let me zoom in a little bit. They've crossed off comical from the list, and it looks like that's been placed here. Okay, it looks like we're supposed to enter each of these words into one of these spaces. Okay, I'm printing this out because this is a bit of a logic puzzle. Um, if this were one of my usual YouTube videos, I would try to find a way to maybe put this into PowerPoint or something. But uh, since we're doing this live and I need to solve it as quickly as possible, I'm going to try to work out on paper where each of these words goes. Uh, it looks like each word goes in one of these spaces, and the edges share common letters between them. Oh, I just noticed I just noticed this uh, additional note at the bottom of the page. Always read everything. <laughs> letters inside quadrilaterals must come from an end of a word. Letters on the edges must be read in order around the shape. I just made a pretty complicated uh, logical deduction. I mean, it was it's not too complicated. It's like two or three steps, but it's a little bit hard with this kind of puzzle to describe that to my teammates. So I had to kind of write out my logical steps here and ask one of them to check it for me. Okay. So we've just finished placing all of the pieces into the grid. Uh, I finished it on paper and I'm writing in the last couple pieces now. Um, the parts inside of the squares uh, form words. There will come a time when you believe everything is finished. That's what's written in the blue sections. And then in the green sections, it says that will be... Is, is that the answer? So the way that we submit answers here is by adding them to the URL that he provided us. It's not that will be. Is this a is this a quote from something? There will come a time that will be the beginning. Okay, so this is a quote. The be Beginning. Oh, wow. So what does this give us? Correct. Welcome to the beginning of the second half. So what do we have now? This looks like the normal puzzle page. Here's the normal puzzle page. And now we have this. Okay, now we do have Act 4 puzzles. <laughs> what is happening? Are these all the same? Okay, I think these are the same from... The original ones okay that makes sense because we were expecting this to be about a week and we were very surprised when the meta was posted today interesting so it looks like the second half puzzles are reflective of the first half puzzles in some way so I didn't film myself solving the the first puzzles with my team the first puzzle of the hunt was called first one and then there was a to-do list here, and now we have second one and to-do list again. Wow. That was pretty crazy. <laughs> um, I will say I kind of had my suspicions that that wasn't the real meta puzzle, because at the top of the page it says meta with a question mark and an exclamation point. Um, but I didn't know for sure. I thought that maybe I just misjudged the hunt, so that was, that was a pretty good, pretty good fake out. 
Okay, so what are the four puzzles that we've unlocked now? <laughs> These look so much like the original puzzles. For comparison, here's, here's the puzzle Canted from the first part of the hunt, and here's the puzzle Reflected from the second half of the hunt. Oh, just a few of the letters are reflecting. So like, look at, look at this V up here at the top. See how it switches? Okay, I think I'm gonna start with this puzzle called Second Chance. A second chance, I imagine. Just because I have an idea of what to do with this, and I solved the first round puzzle uh, that this is based on. So clearly one of the first things that we're gonna wanna do is reverse this so that we can read it. The first round puzzle um, described how to fill in braille characters. So this one says the entire right and the middle left. The entire right would be there, there, and there, and then the middle left would be there. Um, I don't think that's a braille symbol. I wanna, I'll actually, I'll look it up. Okay, it looks like this is, this is the letter W. Um, but my question is, do I have to mirror it? So you see this, this braille shape that I made as a W, but I might have to mirror it because the whole thing was mirrored across the, the X and Y axis to uh, get the letter R. Okay, I'm thinking maybe we're making a picture instead of trying to directly translate these from Morse, or from Braille, rather. For the to-do list puzzle, what we originally did in the first round was we had this calendar um, with these names and what turned out to be verses of the Bible, because there's a Bible uh, in the picture here. And we looked up the quote, and then we indexed into the quote by the day on the calendar. Now in this version, the Bible's gone, and we instead have a Mickey Mouse clock um, pointing with the arms. So I'm thinking this is instead gonna be semaphore. So like if Mickey's pointing at 246, his right arm is, er, his one arm's gonna be up left, and his other arm's gonna be pretty much dead out to the right. And now I'm not sure what to do with these semaphore letters. Okay, so my other teammate who was working on the Rubik's Cube puzzle has gotten words for all of the sides. The digits, zilch, nada, even, prime, color a map is perfect X identity. Even prime is two. Color a map apparently has to do with four color theorems, so it gives us the number four. Six is the only integer that's a perfect number. Zilch or nada is zero, and then the identity is one. The multiplication identity, that is. And so apparently the answer is 24601. Uh... <laughs> I, I extracted these letters, Q-A-D-I-I, -I, from reading the semaphore for this. I think I did that on video. And that isn't a word, but I did notice it's really close to radii, and radii is a word, and apparently the answer... Yeah, actually, especially at 2.46, the hour's almost up, so the, yeah, the hands will be pretty much straight across. That one makes sense. Just took me a minute to see it. Back to this one. <laughs> you ever have one of those moments where you're just sitting there staring at a reversed image to a puzzle, and then you realize that the title spells ASCII? if you read the initial initial letters. So this, so he, he's reversed the rows here, and the black and the white rows are giving us ASCII. So is the answer forest? It is. We got another one. It's been three and a half hours since the uh, fake meta puzzle was released. I hope that you've enjoyed watching me and my team solve some puzzles during a live event. That 
was all of the footage that I was able to get during the event, just because I was more focused on solving the puzzles than making sure that I was getting good footage. So this part of the video I'm actually filming after the event's completely over. I realized that I forgot to do an outro during the uh, filming that I did that day, and I also wanted to go over the answer to this puzzle that I briefly talked about when I was filming. Um, this is the dense wordplay puzzle with uh, the crossword grid that had multiple letters in some spaces. Um, I did mention that day when I was trying to figure this out that every intersection had only one letter in it, and the crucial piece of information that we were missing was to actually read those individual letters in the intersections. So we have T R Y TRY M O D U L O MODULO and the entire thing says try modulo 3 cubed and modulo 2 cubed and so we go back up to this uh, list of really large numbers that was given at the top of the puzzle and when we go modulo 3 cubed it says Jack's mother sings and then when we do modulo 2 cubed we get this set of notes so when you play those notes and you try to identify which part of the song uh, Jack's mother sings with these notes, you get a certain set of lyrics from that, and these two numbers that were highlighted in red um, give the final answer because you want the word that Jack's mother sings when those two notes are being played. And so the answer to this puzzle was Withers. I'll leave you with a couple of teasers for other puzzles from the Edric 2020 puzzle hunt that I didn't get to cover in this video. One of them is this grid over to the side of the screen here, and the other is this strange little artifact. If you want to figure out what those are in reference to, you should definitely check out the Edric 2020 puzzle hunt. It was a lot of fun and my team and I really enjoyed it. I hope that you enjoyed getting an inside look into how at least our puzzle hunt team collaborates on hunts like this. Stay tuned for another puzzle hunt solving series coming sometime in the future, as well as a couple of one-off videos that I have planned, including one that's coming out very soon that I'm calling Awesome Puzzles. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy escaping.